Let's talk about what we call a weighted average. A weighted average simply means that all the values are not given equal weight. A non-mathematical example of this would be, let's say we have 10 employees in a room. One of them is the president and owner of the company and the other nine work for that person. And someone says, what do you think we should do about this situation? And everybody gives an opinion. Not all those opinions have equal weight, <laughs> do they? One of them is going to carry more weight than the others. And that's what we mean by a weighted average. Now, since we're going to college, we're used to the idea of a GPA, a grade point average, and this is a weighted average. What do we mean by that? Well, let's say you were taking a four-hour science class and you were taking a one-hour tennis class. And let's say you had the choice between making an A in one of those classes and a C in the other class. And you wanted to pick which class you made which grade in in order to maximize your GPA. Well, obviously, we'd want to make the A in the four-hour class and we'd want to make the C in the one-hour class because this class having more hours carries more weight in our grade point average than this one does. Let's see how that works. Let's assume we're on a four-point scale where A is a four, B is a three, C is a two, D is a one, and a failing grade doesn't carry any grade points. Let's say we made the A in the four-hour course and we made the C in the one-hour course we would say this is worth how many grade points? An A. It's worth four grade points so I take the value, this is the value, and I multiply it times how much weight it carries. So I've got a value of four grade points, I multiply it times four hours, the weight that it carries, and I earned 16 grade points in that class. I got an A, and each hour of A is worth four points. So I got 16 points. Now, this one hour, how much is a C worth? It's worth two points. And so I multiply my weight, one hour, times my value, two points, and I get two points for that class. Now here's how a weighted average works. We total our weighted points and we divide by the total weights. In this case, the weights are determined by the credit hours for the course. So how many hours are we taking? We're taking five hours. So we take the total multiplied values, we divide it by the total weights, that would be 18 divided by 5, and that would be our grade point average. 3.6. Not bad. We made, we made one A, we made one C, but notice that our average is between an A and a B and it's closer to an A. That's because this A was worth so much more than this C was. Now if these were equally valued, What's the average of 4 and 2? 6 divided by 2 is 3. Halfway between an A and a C is a B, a 3.0. But we got way better than a 3.0 because these weren't equal. This one was worth a lot more. It was worth four times as much as that one. How's that feel? Now let's do it the other way. Let's say we made a C in the big class and an A in the little class. We know we have a 3.6 GPA if we make the A in the four-hour class. But let's say we made a C, which is two points, and an A, which is four points. Now, what's our total points? I get 12. Is that what everybody gets? Two. 
two points times four hours is eight points. Four points times one hour is four points. Twelve total points divided by five total weights is a 2.4 GPA. Big difference, isn't it? Same two grades. So, <laughs> if you're trying to maximize your GPA, you want to get your best grades in the classes that have the most hours. So if I've got a final in this class and this class, and I've only got a certain amount of time to study for them, I want to make sure I make my best grade in that class. Because it'd be better to get a better grade in that class and a worse grade in that class. I mean, obviously the ideal would be to get an A in both of them. But if I had to choose, I'd want to get the A in the four-hour class and let this one slide if I had to, if I had to. Okay, so that's a GPA, a weighted average. Remember the principle. We take weight times value, and this gives us, I think the book calls it an extension or an extended value or a subtotal, sort of like we did in the invoice problems. We total those things and we divide by the total weights total weights. 